It's happening by accident here. We, we, we plan uh, and, and we disseminate, we train staff, we train our students for those who are online. I just need to say we have about 20% students who are online. It's not that we are only face to face. Um, and then our consideration was after the research we conducted is the distribution of hard copy learning materials to students without digital access. Those who are in Mahuela, Ring, Sashevo, Bushba, Greece, Lusiki, Siki, wherever they are. Uh, and I will explain the plan, uh, uh, and we call it actually now the paper based. Uh, further, the plan, our plan has two phases. And I will give the timelines now. First of all, we start uh, with a digital delivery to about Prof. Mukola can help. About there's some students who will in some faculties who are geared, the guys who are studying IT, uh, engineering, uh, sciences. The nature of their programs require them when they enroll uh, digital equipment, for a lack of a better word. The other groups uh, will have the so-called uh, paper-based. This is the first phase where we're in now, and I will explain uh, the phases. And then the next phase is the phased return of students and staff to campus when the risk levels allow face-to-face -face teaching. So we are going closer to the action. Uh, the phased uh, in return of students and staff is guided by the campus elements, uh, uh, and also the lockdown levels will inform us. Uh, the, the, the announcement by our minister of 30% at the different stages, and I will go into it now uh, a, a bit in detail. Uh, so. Right, our delivery uh, remote multi I'm not going to read that if it says the remote multimodal plan, I can later explain what it is. It's just a flexible emergency plan where you consider various modes to finish your year. So it's a, just a fancy terminology. We are having a learning management system, my tutor, we have Blackboard, so we are fully geared to go online for the entire university if our students have the equipment. It's not the university you can't do online, it is, uh, we are geared centrally. Okay, now very important, the paper-based learning materials will be distributed in print format to students who may not be able to use the digital mode due to various reasons as I explained. Uh, the paper-based mode will include all the information, for a lack of a better word, we are not specializing in distance education like UNISA, but it's a typical UNISA model, which we are geared for. Why can we do this? In the past, TUT has had about 20,000 distance education students in Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Namibia, so we have a capability with very sophisticated printing rooms in Sunnyside, Pretoria. So we have a bit, we phase it out over time. So we have that ability and understanding to go paper based. Uh, okay, so this is what we will do there. Um, we have an uh, approved assessment plan, uh, which will be implemented, guided by our university policy on assessment. And I have to admit, there was a lot of questions about assessment. We have a pedagogically sound assessment approaches that are responsive to the remote mode. In other words, our stu distance students will basically do assignments. This is how we will track them. But in the similar uh, uh, online programs, we will have assignments. So that you don't have a differentiated approach. Because otherwise, pedagogically, you might be found wanting if you assess differently. Now, very important, the question I get is, when official exams will be scheduled in the first quarter of next year, it is the classical exams where all of them will sit, and I will later explain, and where students, uh, because we have a monitoring system who fall behind, uh, we will have a catch-up plan. So we will be fair, reasonable to understand if there are students. So we've planned for all of this, and I can give the details. Um, the campus readiness plan confirm, conforms to the government lockdown strategy and the diet regulations, the one that was released yesterday. Uh, the facilities preparedness is staggered to give effect to the phased return of staff and students, subject again to the uh, alert levels. Uh, and again, our COVID task team jointly with the finance procurement department will procure approved PPEs and essential COVID-19 items timely. We've already procured, we are geared, we've got 
uh, rooms uh, full of equipment and stuff. So we, we've planned. It's not something we want to do. The things I'm talking to is things that we've done. And then very important, uh, our students need to have comfort. We will have a catch-up strategy when students return. Uh, here, just a time frame for you. When uh, Mr. Masuku approached us, the minister, to come, we are in this phase from the 20th of April until 12th of June. You find us now intensively in our uh, prep, prep time where certain staff members returned. So there's no students back yet, and I will explain why. You need to be ready. You can't take chances. It's a, okay, then on the 12th of June, uh, the printing materials will go countrywide. We've contracted. These materials will be delivered in different regions, cities, in the remote areas, where students, uh, we communicate where they will pick up uh, all the teaching and learning materials with envelopes and things so that they can send back their assignments. Typical UNISA approach. Then from, uh, we also did some student training for online. You can see uh, for two weeks, we gave the students who for the first time go 100% online. You need to give them training. What is this online all about? And then our first semester will start on the 1st of July and I will speak about clinical students now. now. And then the second first semester will end on the on the second of October, and we will would have covered 14 weeks. Why the 14 weeks? Some of the professional bodies, like the Engineering Council of South Africa, our nursing, and so on, require certain contact time. So at that time, the first semester will be finished. If touch wood, if everything uh, is going according to plan. Second semester, uh, there you can find the timelines, will start on the 12th of October. In December, we will have a very shortened recess from 11 to the 4th of January. Then the second uh, semester will continue and we will conclude all our, our, our uh, uh, lecturing and teaching and learning by the end of January. This is how we, we, we've planned it. Uh, Just I'll go back to that uh, slide again, sorry. Mm -hmm. I just missed up something. Yeah, I was just wanting to check that. Uh, January, so which means your plan for now is to overlap into end of January. Yeah, we. Okay. I, I will explain now. I will go down to the more critical part now. Uh, obviously, on the 15th of June, our clinical students will return to the platforms. We are now still putting... Uh, final things in place. We've got 396 uh, uh, clinical students in various programs. Actually, we have in total 940 uh, clinical students, if I can, training students, but they will return uh, as we move along. Very important to mention here that this 396 is part of, uh, is, is in line with the regulations, it's part of the, the 30. Uh, percent that is coming back on the 20th of July we bring back the final years this is now part uh, of the first on level 3 the first 33 and I will now now just uh, explain uh, uh, give you an exposition of what is this because of the size of this university what it means to bring back 30 percent it is complex so uh, and then our first years and you will see there's normally a two-week period before, the, so the students will have a two-year period, the final years. Same with uh, your clinical, they will have two weeks before they start. Similar with uh, your first years, which will come back uh, on the 24th of August and on the 14th of September, your second years. And by that time, it's 100%. Uh, our only challenge there, Minister, is the physical distancing. And we are still doing studies uh, to check if it's possible to bring back 63,000 students, all of them, uh, physically back. It might mean that some, and I just have to say, it, it might mean that some of our humanities and social science students who do not require laboratory and technical equipment, we've not taken that decision, we need to be fair. Conceptually, we are fair. Each one of them have, have a chance, and then I repeat again, uh, the official exams, and for year students, 
they would have covered then uh, 27 weeks 